Hey everyone, today we're going to start talking about inversion of control. To implement IOC, you generally have two choices, dependency injection and the service locator pattern. Both of these techniques are important to understand, and today's focus will be the service locator. So let's talk for a moment about how inverting your dependencies can solve some issues in your project. If you look at the code I've got on the screen here, you can see I've got a serialized field with a reference to a serialization service. Now that's one way you could do this. Another way might be that you simply instantiate a new serializer every time that you want to use one. The problem with both of these approaches is that you've tightly coupled yourself to this specific implementation of a mock serializer. And if you're instantiating a new one in your class, you can't share this serialization service with other classes unless you expose a public reference to it, perhaps. But even then, in this case, you would need a reference to the hero before you could use the serializer that belongs to the hero. So as mentioned, there's a few ways to get around this problem, and Service Locator is one of them. A service locator acts as a central repository for all the references of things that we're going to need access to so we don't have to start linking all our game objects together. No, it allows us to do other things like get references between different scenes and we'll be able to register different services at the game object level, at the scene level, and also at a global level. So without further ado, let's build a service locator. So I've split the system into three different classes. There'll be a manager class that basically is going to do the storage and retrieval of the different services. The service locator class will be the class that we interact with the most from our various game objects in the game. And we're going to make some bootstrappers that will basically do some configuration when we want a locator of a different type. I've created a few interfaces here and I'm just gonna make some mock services so that we can test out what it's like to go and look for various services from our game objects. So I'll have one here that's a localization service. And all I'm gonna do is make a list of various words. So dog, cat, fish, car, house. And then we can send any string in here, but we'll just return a random word. So that's pretty straightforward. I think the other ones we can keep really simple. We can make a, a mock serializer, you know, it could be anything saving your data or preparing something for going over the network, but we'll just have a simple method on there, serialize. Audio service, same thing. Let's just have a method called play. And in our a game service, just a general game type service, start game maybe, or we could even just call it start and have a regular start method on it. Let's do that. Our service locator class is going to use the service manager to manage all the service classes, the registration of them and the getting of them. So we'll set up a separate class here. It'll just have a dictionary to store all of our services. It's going to store them by type and we'll create two register methods here. Let's have our first one. We'll simply accept a service of any type T and we'll get that type T so that we can put it into the dictionary and we'll just use the dictionary method try add. So we can try add type service. If there's a problem, let's log an error for that. Now we might want to register services in a fluent way. So let's just return the service manager and then we could chain these methods together if we wanted to. Let's make another register method, however, that would also accept the type as a parameter. So if you explicitly wanted it to be a type, suppose your service implements several types and you want to store it as a particular type, then you could just pass it in explicitly this way. In this case, let's do a little extra error checking. So suppose that the type doesn't match what the service is that you passed in. We should probably throw some kind of exception there because that's an obvious problem. Let's also pass out the name of the service you were trying to register when the problem happened. We can also do the same operation we did above, which is to try and add it. And if there's a problem, we're going to log an error. Uh, otherwise, we just return this and continue on. So those, that's good enough for some registration methods, but why don't we make some uh, get methods so that we can actually get a service out of this service manager. We can do a very generic one where we're just trying to get a, any type of type T. So it's kind of the inverse of what we just did to register, but we try to get a service out as T. If we don't return anything, then that's when we're going to throw an exception because that means we forgot to register the service that we're actually looking for might be more useful for us to have a try get method where we actually have one of our params here be using the out variable and that way we can use it right in an if statement. So this is essentially the same as the method below other than returning a boolean instead of the type and we'll use an out parameter. So that's good enough for this particular class. Let's start creating our actual locator that we're going to use to find these services. It's going to be a mono behavior. 
and we're going to be able to store different types of locators in here. Now, the global one is going to act more or less like a singleton, but I also want to store locators that are going to be at this per scene level. So we'll keep those in a dictionary. And then we'll have a reference to our service manager that we just built. So we'll expose our global service locator through a property. We'll have a getter. So we can just say that as long as it's not null, we can return it. In a moment, we're going to create some bootstrapping and be able to initialize one of these at runtime if we want. Or if we fall through that, we could actually just create a new game object with a bootstrapper for this service locator. So I'm just going to jump up here and make a constant for whatever I would call that global bootstrapper. This way I can replace that string down below where I just wrote name with that. And uh, you know what? I'm going to make one for the scene level too, because we'll be using that later as well. So now if we create a game object to hold this bootstrapper, then I could just add the bootstrapper component to it. So we're going to make two bootstrappers. One will be one that configures a global level one and one that configures a scene level one. Why don't we do that right now? And that'll get that out of the way. I'm going to put all the bootstrapping logic into its own file. So I'll just move this away. And you know what? Uh, every bootstrapper should require a component of type service locator. We can also disallow multiple components for this. We can have a base abstract class bootstrapper that can contain all the shared logic and it'll be a mono behavior too. It's going to need a reference to the service locator that it's bootstrapping. And let's expose a property here that will perform a little lazy load for us. We can make use of the or null extension method that we made back in the extensions video. And if it is null, then let's get the component off of the service locator that's attached to this game object. We can also have a Boolean for whether or not this thing has been bootstrapped yet or not. On awake, we can call a method called bootstrap on demand, which will check to see if we've bootstrapped yet. If we haven't, let's set it to true and actually call this abstract method bootstrap. So in our global bootstrapper, we can override our bootstrap method and we'll do some configuration here a little later on. But here in the global one, we want to be able to say whether or not we're going to destroy it on load or have it persist. We'll have a similar method for service locators we want at the scene level and it'll just have slightly different configuration. We'll come back to all this in a moment when we get to that part of the code in the service locator. Let's jump back over there and continue. Let's use the find first object by type method and see if there's actually a global bootstrapper here. If we find one, let's bootstrap it and we'll return that instead. So in this manner, we're kind of falling down through levels of difficulty. You know, is it already defined? Can we find one? Or finally, do we have to make one? So that's all we need to do for defining our global property. Now we're going to want one to be able to fetch a service locator for a particular scene. So what we could do is pass in a mono behavior that's looking for a service locator that's at the scene level for the scene that it's in. And what we can do is do a try get value on our scene containers dictionary and see if we can actually get a service locator for that one. If we can, let's return it. Now, if we can't find one in the dictionary, I'm going to make a static list here where we could just grab all of the root game objects and like we haven't been able to find one that's registered. Why don't we see if there is one and it just didn't get registered because we forgot or what have you. So what we can do is just use some link here to say, let's iterate over all of the root game objects in this scene. And if there are any that actually have the component we're looking for, which is a scene bootstrapper, then what we could actually do is grab that component. Now, once we've got a hold of it, what we could do is just run that bootstrap on demand method and recall that we have a lazy loading property there called container. So we can return that property, which is really a reference to the loaded service locator. So if we couldn't find a registered service locator at the scene level and we can't actually find one in the scene, then we'll start using the global. Now let's go down even one more level granular and that would be right on the actual object that you're looking for. So suppose we have a hero component and the hero has its own service locator component. Then what we can do is use a method called for and we'll just check first of all, is it on this game object or its parents? If it's not, check in the scene. If it's not, use the global. And that's really all of the methods that we need for locating services. So we're actually almost done building a service locator here. 
except we don't have any publicly accessible methods here in the locator for adding and getting services that we've stored in our service manager. We'll have two public register methods that just mimic the ones that are in the service manager, and this, they're just pass-throughs, really. Let's start by making two private helpers. The first one will just check into our registered services and see if we can find it. If we can't do that, we're going to use another helper method that will say, first of all, if we're already at the global level and we haven't found a registered service, then where there is no registered service. And otherwise, let's try to find a service locator that's in our hierarchy here so we can look for a component in the parent. If that's null, look in the scene. If we still haven't found a container that has the service locator, then our container is null and we can return false. And so this way we can have a public method that you can just call it get and it'll kind of go through these in sequence. We'll try and find a registered one. Otherwise, we'll try and find one that's in our hierarchy and in the scene. If we can't find it at all, then it hasn't been registered and we should throw an exception telling us there's a problem. So I'm going to jump back up to the top here. I'm actually going to take this static list and move it up with these other static variables here. Now, the one thing that we haven't done anything with is any logic at all when we're actually bootstrapping one of these service locators. So what we can do is just make some internal methods here that we could call. So if we want to configure a service locator to be global, so what we can say is if this one is already the global, let's log a warning. If we have a different one defined as the global, let's log an error. Otherwise, let's set the global to be this and we'll set the don't destroy on load flag, you know, based on what the setting in the bootstrapper was. We need another one, a simpler one for the scene level one. So what we can do is get the scene from the game object and we can just see if has it already been registered. If it has, let's log an error. And if we haven't added it to our dictionary yet, then we can just have a little add method here. And I don't think at this time there's not really anything else to do with this. We can jump back over to the bootstrapper class and what we can do is remove these comments now and just call these methods on the service locator class. We can also add a few methods in our service locator to make our lives a little bit easier here. Just some menu items so that we could actually just use context actions to create some of these in our scenes. Suppose we want to create a global level service locator. We could just have a menu item action here, a static method that just, we can call it whatever we want really, add global. So all we really need to do in this method is create a new game object and we can pass in the name and we are going to add a global bootstrapper to it. Now, the exact same thing we can do with the scene. It's really no different except for the type that we're passing in and we'll give it a different name, of course. Now let's wrap this in some preprocessor directives because uh, menu items actually come from the Unity Editor class. Now, one more thing we should do here is we should clear all statics. Now, if you recall from our event bus video, um, it's a good idea to clear statics whenever you are coming out of play mode because of the way Unity handles them. It's not guaranteed that static variables will be cleared. So let's just make sure to do that all by ourselves. Let's also do some cleanup in case we were to destroy this service locator. If it's the global, let's set the global value to be null. If it's found in our scene containers dictionary, let's remove it from the dictionary. So at this point, we kind of have an MVP of a service locator. MVP means minimum viable product. So it's, it's not feature rich, but it will do the job. So to demo, I've added a service locator to the hero for the hero and its children local to that game object. I'm going to add a global one to our first scene here, the sample scene. So we've got a global level service locator. You can see it's added a service locator component to as well to the bootstrapper. We can add another scene level uh, service locator here in this first scene. And it's exactly the same as the global one, except for its scope and the way that it's configured, right? And then let's add another scene level locator in the demo scene, the second scene that has a minimap component in it. And the minimap doesn't do anything. We're just going to go into these classes and we'll just set up a little sample of how you would use this. So here in our hero, let's have references to store all of the services that we're going to find. Now, I'm going to register a bunch of services in the awake method. You could do this from anywhere, really, but uh, for the purpose of this demo, because I want to also register services at the level of the hero, I'm going to register them all here in the awake method. So we'll put a localization service at the global level. We'll get a service for just a mock any old game service at the scene level. And at the hero level, 
we will add a serializer. I think that'll make a good demo. And then uh, in our start method here, we can, let's just say we're here in the hero and we're going to do some stuff with these services. So first of all, we can just call our service locator for this, and then we get out every service that we're looking for. So we wanted to get a serializer, we'll get a localization service, we'll get a game service, and then I'm going to register from our mini map, I'm going to register an audio service. Okay, now that we've managed to get references from our service locator for all of these different services, let's actually use them and make sure that they're working. Each of these things, if you recall, is going to debug something out to our console for us when they run. So let's go over to our mini map, which is going to be instantiated in the other scene. We're going to get an audio service here and a different game service. So in Awake, we can also do similar registrations. We could register the game service, which I'll just use a mock map service. And we'll put that at the scene level. And at a global level, we'll register an audio service. Now, in our start method, we'll do something very similar. We'll just fetch out the references and we'll run the public methods. Let's give it a try. So you can see I've got a bunch of stuff out of the console here. I'll just pull it out so we can have a little bit of a closer look at it and see the order of execution here. So the hero started. And you can see our localization service returned us a word. And then the serializer ran. The audio service that was registered in the other scene also ran. Then our game service started. And then our mini map executed and it ran its audio service and its game service, the map service. So that looks great. But right now, all we've done so far is actually instantiate new pure C sharp services. What if you wanted to register a service that you had put on a game object because you want to reference it? from anywhere. You know, that could be anything like your weapon system on your hero, or you might want to register some enemy AI or something like that, that actually lives on a game object in your game. Let's have a look at that. So I've come back in here and I've already added a little list of type object to our hero. So it's serialized, we'll be able to drag in references. And what we could do is in the awake method, we could simply get the service locator for this object. And so that's either going to be a service locator on this object in the scene or possibly at the global level. Then we simply iterate over all of these objects and register them as their specific type. So now keep in mind, you don't have to register things that are quote unquote services. You could register anything that you want to reference. So for example, I can drag this capsule collider on my hero into here. So even though we call this pattern a service locator, it's really a locator of a reference to anything you're looking for. So it could be this capsule collider, it could be the health component on my hero or this mana component. Now I've added a little debug statement onto my service locator to say what types are being registered. If we take a look in the console here, we can see one by one, it was registering the capsule collider, the health component, and then the mana component. Now, before I ran this, I removed all of the service locators. So you can see in the don't destroy on load section, we have now a global service locator, which has registered all three of these components. So technically right now, our other scene could actually get a reference to the capsule collider on our hero if we wanted. The service locator is powerful and flexible, but some people consider it to be an anti-pattern because it conceals dependencies. You also need to ensure that you have correctly registered the services you want to use before you try to use them, so code defensively. Now, the service locator pattern also means that every class that uses it now also has a dependency on the service locator. In an upcoming video, we're going to talk about dependency injection and various frameworks you can use, which is a more powerful form of inversion of control. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.